Hello everybody, we're going to talk about coffee today. I love my coffee, I've always loved coffee. Um, I think as a teenager I quickly learnt that coming for a coffee when you drop your girlfriend home was the perfect excuse. If you don't drink coffee, say, oh, I don't drink coffee. <laughs> You've lost it. Missed your chance, mate. Um, also, I worked out in Ivrea for Olivetti, uh, where they had the Convento, which was a, a, an old convent they'd converted to a coffee shop. Fantastic coffee. Oh, my God. It's a dull, dull job. Overpaid dull job. But uh, it uh, they make fantastic coffee, and I think that's what got me hooked on my coffee, really. I'm going to go through all the different machines I've had, and... At the end, I'll give you what I think is the ultimate solution if you want to make really good coffee at home. I'm not a coffee snob. I mean, I've had friends that are coffee snobs, you know, they're a bit like wine critiques. I'm not convinced they know their stuff anyway. It's all bollocks. I just know when I like a good coffee. And I was in search of a coffee shop coffee. You know, you buy a coffee in Costa or um, pret a or Starbucks, any of those coffee shops. You buy a coffee there you get you get a good coffee and I was trying to get as close to that as I could at home without spending two thousand pounds on a coffee machine so let's go through the machines I've tried hopefully you won't make the same mistakes I've had an awful lot of them um, and we're going to bish bosh through this a bit quick because a lot of people have said these videos are getting too long and I'm waffling too much so let's bang through it you've got a number of choices You've got instant. It's got its place. Bang. You've made a cup of coffee. You've got your caffeine hit. It tasted a coffee. It was hot. It woke you up and you're on your way. Fine. That's not for me, though. Um, I don't think I hardly ever drink instant now. Next up, you've got your ground coffee machines. You know, you put the co ground coffee you've bought from the supermarket into a little tray, put it underneath and great. But I couldn't be asked with all the grounds, you know, in the sink afterwards and the cleaning up. And it seemed to be more cleaning up than making coffee. So I started looking at the pod machines. Pods are great, but limited amount of coffee in most of them. I think most of them are overpriced for the amount of coffee you get out of them. I'll come on to that with the Nespresso machines. Um, and you're trading sort of convenience for quality of taste and the cost of the coffee you're buying um, so I my solution now is bean to cup it's it's really the way to go and I'm going to go through the different machines I've tried quick as possible bish bosh bang and hopefully you can choose from that what will work for you my first coffee machine that wasn't instant coffee so first coffee machine was an espresso um, bought for me by my lovely late wife the Christmas she died she bought it for me as a Christmas present so it's kind of had an emotional attachment loved it loved it loved it loved it made me real coffee um, the big advantage of the Nespresso machine anyone can work it drop the pod in press the button you've got a coffee you can't mess it up I mean even if you've got house guests who've never used a coffee machine before it doesn't take long to work an Nespresso machine that's the big advantage it's got a number of disadvantages though. Disadvantage I found was to make a really proper coffee, the sort you'd get in a coffee shop, took two or even three capsules and suddenly your coffee's got expensive. Um, I also really fell out of love with Nespresso as a company. I love BMW cars. I love the cars. I hate the company. They're the most arrogant company I've ever known. And I kind of felt the same way with Nespresso. Nespresso used to make these lovely uh, uh featured coffees at Christmas with a, a cinnamon flavour or whatever, special edition coffees. I used to love trying them out. Then one day I went in the shop and they said to me, oh no, you, you can't try this one because it's just so rare. Bugger off Nespresso, it's not that rare, it's a coffee pod. It's only rare because you put sod all coffee in the capsules. And I suddenly realised that Nespresso was a bit like that printer you buy for your computer. You don't pay a lot for the printer, but you get absolutely robbed every time you buy a cartridge. Except Nespresso's machines weren't even cheap. Um, Nespresso, I think, was probably a great idea. They didn't protect it. The supermarkets came along, copied the pods, and they lost their market. And that's why they're now making new pods with barcodes and all that crap. But, yeah, if you're happy to pay the money, a Nespresso machine will get you a decent cup of coffee fairly quick. And I'll come on to um, why I've got my Nespresso machine in my mobile office now, because for that it just fits the bill. So it has its place, but as I say, I fell out of love with Nespresso.
after Nespresso, once I decided I didn't like them, um, I was looking for a new machine. I did a little bit of research and I bought a Gaggia Brera. It's a bean to cut machine. I think it's the best of everything. We'll come on to it at the end and have a look. And um, it's bean to cut so your coffee's always fresh. You choose your coffee, you're not buying it in a pod so you're not locked into any company. Um, it makes a damn good cup of coffee quite efficiently. It's ultimately customizable. You can make more water, you can make more coffee, you can adjust the size of the grounds, you can adjust things till you get it exactly how you want it. And you can play around with frothing the milk on the on the little thing. And uh, I've loved my Brera and I had, uh, I've had a couple of them now. Um, when they get old here, I retire them to France. And actually when I go to France, I often think, God, I wish I'd stuck with that Brera. I'll come on to that. The Brera machine I had finally reached old age, really. Seals started to go. Um, it got scaled and had to go back to the factory for a repair. I mean, the water we've got here is so hard it carries a flick knife. Um, but it, it, it had a couple of problems and I decided it was just getting old. And I decided to upgrade um, to another Gaggia machine. Um, it's the Cadorna. It's considered the next one up from the Brera. It's got a colour touchscreen. You can all save your preferences. It's meant to be the business and really it's missed the mark. It has one killer feature and that is when I'm late for a meeting, you know, I've got five minutes before my meeting, I can throw the cup underneath, press the button, go for a wee, come back, my coffee's made. So you don't have to do anything. You know, you press the button, walk away. That's its, that's its best feature. Other than that, it misses out on a lot of other things. So compared to the Brera, um, I don't think it's as configurable. The Brera you can do much more with. It seems to be stuck between an office machine, which, by the way, would be too complex for anyone to work in an office, um, and a uh, home machine. And it doesn't seem to fit either very well. It's constantly nagging me for more water because the, the uh, reservoir is too small, emptying the coffee puck you know, the grout, grounds that come out the machine as pucks, um, emptying the tray underneath. It's constant putting more beans in. None of, the, none of the capacities are big enough to make it a serious sort of office type machine. And they're all, you know, you're stuck in that niche between being an office machine and being a home machine, and it does both badly. So I can't recommend the Cadorna. I mean, it's a great looking machine and it was a lot more money than the Brera, but I'm not convinced it does anything much better. You've got a family of six that all like their coffee a different way. Maybe that programmable, you know, sort of I like my coffee like this button is valuable. For me, it's not sad twat on my own. Got one button. God, that is sad. Anyway, moving on. If you want an ultimate cup of coffee, it comes down to a Bialetti mocha pot. I just love these things. I bought my one in our trip to Tuscany with my late wife. We had a lovely holiday and I looked in a coffee machine, coffee shop, coffee machine shop window and I saw this thing and fell in love with it immediately. <laughs> it was a limited edition, I put a picture in of course, um, and I loved it just because it's it's coffee art. I mean, you, you enjoy making your coffee, you spend a bit of time and get some pleasure out of making a nice cup of coffee with it, and it's ultimately configurable, you make your coffee how you like. The other thing is, it makes the best coffee I have ever tasted, and I mean ever, even the coffee shops can't make it like this thing. Uh, if you get it right, and I'll put a link to a guy called James Hoffman who, who will show you how to do it. If you get it right, it will make you the best cup of coffee you've had in your life. And, and I, I think that's quite a promise. I have it Saturday morning. It's a bit of my Saturday morning routine. Put the old crispy bacon under the grill, make myself a really nice cup of coffee and enjoy making it and enjoy drinking it and eating the crispy bacon. Um, the problem with it is there's a couple of problems. The first of well, a few drawbacks, actually, but I think it's still worth it. One is it takes time. You know, you're, you're, you're enjoying making your coffee. It's not a bish bosh, make a cup of coffee. It's sit and enjoy the pleasure of making a good cup of coffee. The other is it makes one coffee. It gets very hot. 
and you have to let it cool down before you can make another one. So you either have to buy different size mocha pots if there's going to be one, two, four, however many of you there are. Um, and also, if you if you get a really good cup of coffee, you think, oh, I'll have another one of them. It, you have to let it cool down. And it's got all the disadvantages of a grout machine. You've got to, you've got to tip it out, clean it out, look after it. Um, there's also an element of aluminium. I don't particularly like aluminium cookware, and they are made of aluminium. Um, so I have a slight problem with that, but for the one or two cups I make in a week with it, um, I'll live with that. Um, and the other, the disadvantage for me, I like a milky coffee, a milk based coffee, and um, it, it only makes an espresso. So if you want to have a, a, a milky coffee, you have to have another way of frothing your milk. I'll come on to that. By the way. If you call an espresso an expresso, I'm going to come round your house and I'm going to slap you about a bit. Can't stand people calling it expresso just because they can't learn what it really is. So don't call it expresso or I'll be round there with my persuader baseball bat as a promise. Actually, it might not be a promise. If you live the other side of the world, I'm not going to give a shit. For my mobile office, the requirements are different. Typically, in a mobile office where I'm working and travelling, typically I want to make a cup of coffee quick, easy, bang. I don't really like instant, and in fact, in a mobile office, you know, with a kettle and everything, it's not it's not necessarily easier to make an instant than it is to have a coffee machine. I tried. Um, I originally was going to have a bean to cup machine, but I, I I found I didn't want to clean up behind it, so I just want a coffee. I'm waiting for the ferry. I've got ten minutes before the ferry loads. I've driven all night, and now I just want a cup of coffee, and I don't want to mess about. I I found I wasn't making the coffee because I didn't want to mess around cleaning up a bean to cup machine. I then bought the uh, Dolce Gusto machine. My mate Nico in France made me a Dolce Gusto coffee. It was bloody good, actually. Um, and he made it in a minute or two. Now, if you want to make a quick cup of coffee that's better than an instant, that's the way to go. But, and there's a big but here, um, it, uh, any milk-based drinks, the milk is powdered. So you've either got to get a milk frother and, and, and not use the powdered milk, at which point you are now on two machines and it's lost its convenience factor. Um, and I couldn't put up with the milk powder taste on a lot of the drinks. So um, if, if you can put up with that, it's a great machine. You put a capsule in and bang, you've got a cup of coffee. It literally in a minute or two, probably quicker than it takes to make an instant coffee and without all the faffing about with spoons and jars and blah, blah, blah. Just put your cup under, bang, it's done. Um, from that point of view, fantastic machine. It also makes hot chocolate, which in the van I thought might be nice, um, but I just couldn't get over the powdered milk taste. Um, I, I, when I put the video in here, which I'm going to do, you'll, you'll quickly realise the coffee looks very chemically for lack of a better term you know it doesn't look like a real coffee it's almost like the froth isn't real such a dobber fairy liquid make it frothy type thing um i it doesn't make a great cup of coffee but it makes it bloody quick so if that's what you want those dolce gusto machines are fine for you um i then got rid of that because again couldn't deal with the powdered milk and i went back to oh sorry no before that i bought a bico bean to cup absolutely bloody useless the only thing it did was it was bean to cup it did nothing well you couldn't pick the damn thing up without the water canister coming off the back um the the coffee pucks that come out the bottom they're not pucks it's just a, a mud of sludge of grounds uh, which brought me back to the machines where you know you you, you grind grind put the ground coffee in and uh, so it was messy um it was not configurable in any way. You get a milky coffee or you get an espresso. That's it. That's your choice. Um, and to cap it all, it made crap coffee. I mean, it really, if, if you got this in a cafe, you'd think this is a shit coffee. Um, and you're paying for a bean to cup machine. For an extra 50 to 100 pounds, you get a, cup, a, a coffee machine like a Gaggia Brera that will make you a fantastic cup of coffee every single time. So I'm afraid the Bico was a fail on every level. It's going back on eBay. See it on eBay, don't say, don't point them at this video, please, because I just need to sell it on eBay. I'll probably put that it makes a great cup. No, I won't. No, I won't. I won't do that. Um, eventually, I dusted off my... Um, 
old uh, Nespresso machine bought for me by my late wife. I hadn't, you know, too too connected to it to throw it out. It had gone into a cupboard. I think my son had had it for a while. I think my son's office had had it for a while. It had done the rounds, come home. I couldn't bring myself to throw it out because I had too much of an attachment to it. It wasn't working. You plugged it in, nothing happened. And I took it apart, bought some new parts, put it back together again, made it work, and it's now in the van. And actually, I'll live with an espresso for the convenience of being make, being able to make that quick cup of coffee. Yes, I might have to put two or three capsules in it to get a decent cup of coffee, but I can live with the uh, convenience factor of a quick cup of coffee. Incidentally, you can buy those broken espresso machines for £10 on eBay. You can spend £10 on them and fix them to a £200 coffee machine. Um, I might well do an aside video on that because I found fixing that coffee machine was an absolute doddle. So, you know, don't chuck your Nespresso machine out when it when it stops working. And they've got a number of things. They've got a, a, a temperature sensor sensitive fuse that goes on them. It's a 10p item on eBay. Put a new one in, it works again. So don't chuck your Nespresso machine out when it stops working. Um, it, you, you can repair it so easily. The other thing about the Nespresso machines is they often come with a milk frother and the milk frother can be bought separately. So you're not getting done for the Nespresso capsules. You can just buy the frother. And for my Bialetti machine, I keep a separate frother just for the milk. Um, and it works a treat. It's quick and easy. Throw the milk in, press the button. You've got frothy milk within oh, about a minute. Um, so that's another good tip. Coming back, as promised, my ultimate solution, I would buy the Gaggia Brera coffee, bean to cup coffee machine. It's the best combination of configurability, probably the best cup of coffee you can make from a machine because you can configure it to exactly how you want it. You can froth the milk exactly how you want it. Um, it makes a damn good cup of coffee and it, uh, I think, costs, uh, I think the list price in the UK is about £400, quite a lot of money. Um, but not when you think the Beko piece of crap that doesn't make a decent cup of coffee costs 150 to 200 I think it is. Um, you can also buy the Gaggia Brera. If you hunt around online, you can get them 100 to £150 cheaper. They might come from Italy with a European plug that you have to change. Worth every penny for 150 quid. Um, so I would recommend the Gaggia Brera. I've, I've loved mine. If I had to buy an, a new coffee machine from scratch, without any doubt, Gaggia Brera, without any doubt at all. Uh, and I say I've tried an awful lot of them. Um, and then I have my uh, Bialetti Mocha Pot for my Saturday mornings when I want to make that absolutely knockout gorgeous cup of coffee and enjoy making it. That's my best tip I can give you. Now, if you like this, please like and uh, subscribe. It's taken me a lot of work filming loads of different coffee machines, making cups of coffee, cleaning them all up afterwards, buggering about with cameras and stuff like that. So if you could just subscribe, click the like button, or better still, join in, comment on what you like and dislike, what you found with coffee machines, if perhaps you've got a recommendation. Um, drop it in the comments because uh, it makes doing these videos all worthwhile when I know people are getting something from it. Next video, by the way, I'm planning um, my first grumpy old man rant. It's going to be about the state of the UK government and our bloody MPs. Now, I'll probably get thrown off uh, probably get thrown off YouTube for it. So enjoy the channel while you can, because next week I'm probably going to get barred. I mean, I am just so pig sick of our bloody government in the UK. And uh, I'm going to have a bit of a rant about it. Things that have really got on my tits about it. So uh, we'll, we'll get into the grumpy old man next week. See you then.